This is some extra factoring practice for our general factoring strategies. Our first problem says 4x cubed minus x, and we need to factor this. So what we need to do is look and see, is there a greatest common factor that I can factor out? And the answer is yes, I can factor out an x. And that gives me 4x squared minus 1. Now, after we factor out the greatest common factor, can either one of my factors be factored even further? And the answer is yes, this one right here can be factored further. There are two terms, so we are going to use the difference of the squares. My a is 2x and my b is 1. So my final factoring will be the greatest common factor times the factorization of 4x squared minus 1, which would be 2x plus 1 times 2x minus 1. Okay, the second one, a little bit different. There are three terms instead of two terms. So first, we find the greatest common factor, which would be 3. So I'm going to factor out the 3, and I'm left with x squared plus 5x. And then, let's see, 42 divided by 3 would be 14. So now we just need to find two things that multiply to get to 14 and add to get to 5. Okay. So that would be 7 and 2. And since the bigger number needs to be positive, it will be x plus 7, x minus 2. OK, 3. We have two terms, and both of those terms are perfect cubes. So my a is going to be 3x, and my b is going to be 2. And I'm going to use the formula for a cubed minus b cubed, which is a minus b times a squared. So 3x squared is 9x squared plus a times b, so that's 6x plus b squared, which is 4. OK. Number four, 16x cubed plus 2. All right, well, this one's a little bit harder, but neither one of these are perfect squares or cubes. I guess 16 is a perfect square, but what we need to do is let's factor out the greatest common factor first. The GCF between 16 and 2 is 2. That leaves me with 8x cubed plus 1. So now we have the sum of the cubes where my a is going to be 2x and my b will be 1. So if I go and I factor this, I get 2 times 2x plus 1 times a squared, so that's 4x squared, minus a times b, so that's 2x times 1, plus b squared, which is 1 squared, or 1. So 4 is a little bit different than 3 because there is a greatest common factor first, and also um, it's a plus instead of a minus. OK, 5 is kind of tricky. There's a couple ways to do this. There are four terms, so we do need to factor by grouping. So I'm going to group the first two and the second two terms together. All right, let's start with the first one. I have 12x squared y minus 27y. So there is a common factor, which would be 3y. And then I am left with 4x squared minus 9. That's good, because my second factor is that 4x squared plus 9. So what I'm going to do on the second one is I'm actually just going to factor out a negative 1. And if I factor out a negative 1, I'm left with 4x squared minus 9. So I'm just taking a negative out from each term. OK, now I factored out the common factor between each group. Now each group has a common binomial. So I'm going to factor out the common binomial, which would be 
4x squared minus 9. All right, we will be left with 3y minus 1. Okay, we're not quite done because the set first factor, 4x squared minus 9, is the difference of the squares. So I'm going to factor. I like to write the factors that aren't factorable first. And then let's go ahead and factor this 4x squared minus 9. 2x and 3, so that's going to be 2x plus 3, 2x minus 3. So always look to see that your factors can be factored even further. Okay, question 6. Let's factor out the greatest common factor first. That would be 3. We are left with 4x squared minus 12x plus 9. Interesting. Okay. This is a perfect square, so if you recognize that, then go for it. Um, just in case that is not recognizable for you, we're going to take that 4, multiply the 9. That gives us 4x squared minus 12x plus 36. Sorry, I messed up here. We don't want a 4 there. Okay, we brought the 4 in front. So we got to remember to divide by 4 at the end. But I need to find the two factors here of 36 that add to get to 12. That's going to be x minus 6 and x minus 6 or x minus 6 squared. Now, because we multiplied by 4 here, we need to go back and divide by 4. That reduces to x minus 3 halves. And then any denominator that remains, we just bring it up. So that gives us 3 times x, sorry, times 2x minus 3 squared. Okay, question 7. This is a tricky one. We have four terms, so let's just start out by grouping 2 to 2 and see what happens. If I group 2 to 2, I'm left with x times 3x cubed minus 8y squared. Okay, well, let's see what happens. On the second one, it looks like I can factor out a 2x squared, which leaves me with x minus 6y. Okay, so this is not the right grouping. This grouping will not work. So I'm going to rearrange these problems and see if I can get a grouping to work. I'm just going to switch these two middle terms, and let's just see what happens. 3x to the fourth plus 2x squared minus 8y squared x minus 12x squared y. This is still not good. OK, let's group. We have x squared. That gives us 3x squared plus 2. If I factor out a negative 4yx, I'm left with 2y minus plus 3x. Okay, so what this leads me to believe is this is prime. Okay, which means that there was probably a typo when I went to go put it in, and so the answer to 7 is not correct. I think that what happened is one of the Y's should be switched. So it is something I'll fix for next time. So don't worry about 7. If you were running in circles around 7 and you just could not get it, that's because there was a typo in the original problem. All right, so let's look at 8. And we'll just forget about 7. 
Okay, so 8, we need to factor this by first factoring out the greatest common factor, which would be a 4x. We are left with x to the 8 minus 100. Okay, x to the 8th is a perfect square. My a would be x to the 4th. And 100 is a perfect square, which would be 10. I am so glad that that b is a 10. All right, so if we factor that using the difference of the squares, we get x to the 4th plus 10, x to the 4th minus 10. Now, if that 10 was a perfect square, we could factor this one further. But because it is not a perfect square, we are done with the problem. So in order for something to be factored further using the difference of the squares, you must have a subtraction, and both must be a perfect square. All right, so just keep that in mind. We do have the subtraction. x to the fourth is a perfect square, but 10 is not. All right, let's try 9. Okay, 9. Here I have a common factor, which would be 9x, and that leaves me with x cubed minus 1. Ooh, awesome. That means we're just going to use the difference of the cubes with pretty easy numbers. So we have 9x out in front, and then we go a minus b, and then a squared plus a times b plus b squared. And that is it. OK, so 9 has four terms. This one's actually going to work. So I'm just going to factor the first two and the last two. Um, so my first group, it looks like x squared is a perfect squared. And let's see, looks like negative 4 can be factored out of my second group. All right, now each group has the same common binomial, x minus 5. And we are left with x squared minus 4. Now, x squared minus 4 can be factored. That's a perfect square. Those are ones I should expect you to get pretty quick. x squared minus 4 is x plus 2, x minus 2. Okay, so that's 10. Let's look at 11. First, let's try and find a common factor between 3x to the fifth and 24x cubed. Hmm, did I write that? Oh, it's x squared. I'm sorry. That is the problem. Okay, so we're going to factor out a 3 and an x squared. So that would be x cubed plus 8. All right, perfect. x cubed plus 8, we can factor using the difference of the squares, of cubes, some of the cubes. There we go. <laughs> so we have 3x squared, and then it's a plus b, so x plus 2, times a squared, so that's x squared, minus a times b, so that's 2x, plus b squared, so 2 squared is 4. Whenever you do these factorings, make sure that whatever the greatest common factor was is included at the end of your problem. Okay, 12, I have 14xy, 10yw, 8xw. Well, my variables, there's no common variables that can be factored out. But I have 14, 10, and 8. That is a common factor of 2. So I'm going to factor out 2 here. I'm left with 7xy minus 5yw. Now, both of those terms have a y. The only problem is... My last term does not. So there's our final answer. Just factoring out the one common factor. OK, 13. Looks like there is a common factor of x squared. That leaves me with 9x squared 
minus 25x minus 6. Okay, now we can't factor, or sorry, we can't just, or what we need to do is we need to multiply that last term by 9. There we go. We end up with x squared times x squared minus 25x minus 54. Well, we need to find two things that multiply to get to 54, sorry, negative 54, and add to get to negative 25. All right, um, if you want a chance to stop and think about it yourself, go ahead and pause the video. If not, it's going to be 27 and 2. The 27 will be the negative. So we end up with x squared times x minus 27, x plus 2. Now we did multiply by 9, so we need to go back and divide by 9. And 2 ninths does not reduce, so that 9 will come up. And there we go. There is our full factoring. Okay, 14. If you can get over the fact that there's an x and a y, then this one is actually a pretty simple problem. Really, the y and the x are just kind of there. We need to think about what multiplies to get to negative 24 and adds to get to 2. Well, that's just 6 and 4. So that's going to be x minus 6y, x plus 4y. And that is the factoring. In fact, 15 is going to be fairly similar. Okay, the only difference is the y is first and the x is second. So you can either switch the terms up and factor out a negative, or you're just going to find the x and the y spots where they are. It really doesn't matter. So here we're just looking for the two things that multiply to get to negative 21 and add to get to negative 4. So that would be 7 and 3. The 7 is going to be the negative. And there is our factoring. Okay, 16. Hmm, we have no common factor. So then I'm going to take this 5 and multiply the 3. That gives me x squared minus 16x plus 15. Okay, so the factors of 15 are minus 15 and 1. Then we just go and divide by 5. We get x minus 3. On the second factor, let's bring the 5 up. And that's 5x minus 1. Third plus 22s minus 16. So let's take that 3 and multiply the 16. We end up with s squared plus 22s, and then 16 times 3 will be 8, 48. Okay, so we need to find the factors of 48 that have a difference of 2. Should be 24 and 2. So s plus 24, s minus 2. But because I multiplied by 3, at the end I have to go back and divide by 3, reduce those fractions, so 24 over 3 is 8, and there we go. Any fractions that don't get reduced, just bring them on up. I usually do the reducing and the bringing up at the same time. So there's our final answer. All right, 18 is kind of a weird special one. What's going to happen is, well, first let's take this 2 and multiply the 3, and then I'll show you what happens after. 
I have an x squared and an x to the fourth. So this is going to factor into x squared and x squared. OK, and then I'm going to look at the factors of, um, let's see, 6 that give us 1. So that's going to be minus plus 3 minus 2. Then I just go and I divide by 2. Now this is a, definitely a tricky one. It is one we will do and learn later on in the semester. But it's kind of good to see. Now, x squared minus 1 can be factored further. So if I factor it one more time, I get x plus 1 x minus 1. That's a hard one. And there were some concepts that we haven't actually even talked about. And it's taking the squared. And if we square the middle term and it's the first term, then you can put them into their factors just like a regular binomial. OK, 19. There's a common factor of 2. So let's factor 2 out. So we end up with 6x squared plus 5xy minus 4y squared. OK, we're going to take the 6 and multiply the 4. So I have here x squared plus 5xy minus 24y squared. All right, two things that multiply to get to 24 and add to 5 are 8 and 3. Let's see, the 8 is going to be the positive 1. The 3 will be the negative. I'm going to divide each of those by 6 because that's what I multiplied originally. Let's reduce those fractions. That is 4 thirds. And one half. So just bring any of the denominators up. So we have 3x plus 4y and 2x minus 1y. You don't need to write the 1, though. There we go. OK, 20, finally an easy one. <laughs> Um, this is the difference of the squares, so my a is 2x and my b is 3. So we get 2x plus 3, 2x minus 3. It's our difference of the squares. All right, let's look at 21. Okay, 18 is actually pretty similar to 20. The only difference is there is a common factor first. I have... 18 and 8 has a common factor of 2, so that gives me 9x squared minus 4. So that gives me an a of 3x and a b of 2. So my common factor times a plus b, a minus b. And there's our factoring. OK, 22. We do have the two terms, so we do need to decide if these terms are perfect squares or perfect cubes. In this case, they are perfect squares because they're both even powers. So my a is going to be x squared, and my b is going to be y to the fifth. So we have x squared plus y to the fifth times x squared minus y to the fifth. And there we go. OK, 23 is another one of these x squared to x to the 4. So we're going to put x squared in our initial spot. And then we're just looking for the factors of 30 that have a difference of 1, which would be 6 and 5. The cool thing about this one is 6 and 5 are neither one of those are perfect squares. So we are done with the factoring. All right, the last couple problems here. 24, if you understand 24, it might be the easiest one on here. 
because really we're looking for two things that multiply to get to 8 and add to get to 3. Well, it happens to be nothing. There's no factors of 8. So the factors of 8 are either 8 and 1 or 2 and 4. There's no combination of these numbers that can add to get to 3. So because of that, we say that this polynomial is prime. On question 25, we're looking for two things that multiply to get to 15 and add to equal negative 8. That's just 5 and 3. And since it's a negative 8 that they add to, they have to be the same sign. We will have negative 5 and negative 3. So that just looks like this, x minus 5y, x minus 3y. Now if you're not sure if you factored these right or not, you simply need to just FOIL to see if you have done the problem right. Okay, 26 has four terms. Now if I group 2 to 2, it's not going to work. So I'm going to try grouping this where I go 3 to 1. Now this first one, if I factor the first term, it is the factors of 16 that give me 8 would be x minus 4 times x minus 4, or we know that as x minus 4 squared. Okay, so the first step is to factor the first three terms. If the first three terms don't factor to a perfect square trinomial, re rearrange the terms and then try and factor again. Now, once you do that, we have two perfect squares, so we have a squared minus b squared. My a is x minus 4, so it's going to be a plus your b, which is y, a minus your b. Okay. Okay, 26 is a good example of where we need to factor by grouping, but they're not in the right order. I do have an x squared and an a squared. No other a's occur in the problem, so because of that, I know that I'm going to need to factor this. Let's see x squared. I'm going to rearrange the terms so that minus a squared is in the back. Okay, and I'm going to group these three and that factors into x plus 7 squared minus 49a squared. So my a will be x plus 7 and my b will be 7a. And then just like above, we have x plus 7 plus 7a, x plus 7 minus 7a. That is the factoring by grouping when we have to group 3 to 1. And there's not really a straightforward easy way to tell whether or not you're going 3 to 1 versus 2 to 2. The key that I looked for was that I do have two things that are perfect squares and if I group all of the x groups together and then bring that other perfect square to the other side it happened to work out. Alright so let's do one more practice with those because they are very tricky. I have x squared, whoops, there we go. I have an x squared minus 6x minus a y squared plus a 9. Now if I switch the 9 and the y squared, hopefully you can see now we have a perfect square and then an individual term. So if I factor the perfect square, here we get x minus 3 squared minus y squared. So my a is x minus 3 and my b is y. So we have x minus 3 plus y, x minus 3 
minus y. There we go. So three problems. Two of them we had to rearrange. Usually you won't have to rearrange too much. Um, but this is how you would do the problem if you have to factor by grouping going 3 to 1. Alright, let's try 29. Okay, on 29 we can factor by taking the 4, multiplying the 1, and doing the process that I taught with any term when there's a number in front. But I want to show you the shortcut for this one in case um, you're comfortable with that. You can kind of check it. Um, if I take my first term, it is a perfect square, that is 2y. 1 is also a perfect square is 1. If I multiply a and b and double it and I get my middle term, then I have a formula that is a plus b squared equals a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. So since we're in this format, we can factor this as 2y plus 1. Now there are other ways to factor it. I just wanted to do one problem where you see there is a nice quick way to do the problem. Okay, so keeping that problem in mind, this is also the first term and the last term are perfect squares. So if my a was x and my b was 8y, if I were to multiply those and double it, I do get the middle term. This is a plus here, so it would be x plus 8y squared. If the middle term was a minus, then a minus would go in between the two values. All right, so that is it for the factoring. Um, there's a lot of problems and there's a lot of other resources you can go and find if you are still struggling fa with factoring. So just let me know if you really are having trouble. All right, there you go. Good luck.